Here's another example of equilibrium. So we have our crane. We're told this is 7.6 meters long. It's supporter, supported at its lower end down here by a pin. It's elevated by the horizontal cable. We have our load that is 113 kilograms suspended from the outer edge. The center of gravity of the crane, that is representing center of mass. Again, center of mass and center of gravity are the same thing when we're dealing with regular sized objects, even a crane. It's when we get huge skyscrapers that that is different. So they're telling us the center of gravity is three meters. So come up here three meters from the pin. That means that's where we treat the force of gravity from the crane itself. So the weight of the crane. We want to find the tension in the horizontal cable. All right, so again, equilibrium. We know the net torque and the net force need to be zero. The first thing we want to do is draw a free body diagram. And we want to do that for the crane specifically, so just the bar that represents the crane, because that's what ties everything together, meaning that's what connects it down here. So there's an X component from the pin, and I'm just going to draw the Y component up. There's the force of gravity because of the crane's weight itself. There is a tension in this horizontal cable. There is a pull downwards because of the load that the crane is holding up. This, because we're in equilibrium, the load itself is feeling the force of gravity downwards and that, that tension upwards. I'm gonna call this MG for the load. Since the load at the moment is not moving and we are calculating for it not moving, the load itself, the tension it feels upwards is balancing out the gravity downwards. So the tension in that cable, that vertical cable must be mg for the load. Now when it comes to rotational motion, we cannot say anymore that the tension is the same everywhere in any one given rope. So like for pulleys, that sort of thing. That's why we have to account for those tensions differently. So we're looking for the tension in the horizontal cable. We know the mass of the load, we know the mass of the crane, we know those distances. So I am going to write out the net torque equation first. Now, as a reminder, torque is RF perpendicular or RF sine phi. So to be able to talk about torque, we need to choose a rotation axis. My recommendation is to put the rotation axis where you have the most unknown forces and forces you don't care about, per se, that, you don't, they're, that you're not calculating for. So I'm gonna put the rotation axis down here where the pin is attached. And so that means there will be no torque due to this Y component of the force uh, from the pin. There's gonna be no torque due to the X component from the pin, and that's because R is zero. There will be a torque due to this tension force. There will be a torque due to the load and there will be the torque due to gravity on the crane itself. But those torques need to add to zero. Sorry. So let's see, in terms of the torques, we have the torque due to the tension force rotating, or that would rotate counterclockwise that needs to balance out the torque due to gravity on the crane because that would tend to rotate clockwise 
as well as the torque due to the load, because that also would rotate the crane clockwise. So we're balancing these out to make sure that the net torque is zero. All right, so let's look at the torque of these individually. We need RF sine phi. So R, as a reminder, we start at the rotation axis and draw a line out to the force. So for tension, that lever arm distance is 7.6. The force is T, whatever tension may be, but this tension force has components that are parallel to the crane and perpendicular to the crane. This is the one we want. Call it a T sub Y, even though it's technically not in the Y direction, at least not the typical Y direction. When we look at the equation for torque and write it as RF sine phi, the phi is always the angle between the R vector, we call R the lever arm, so between the lever arm vector, which is along the crane, and the force vector. So if we write in R, the 7.6, T sine phi, is what gives us the component of the force that is perpendicular to the lever arm, to the crane. So if you think about it over here, this Y component or this component perpendicular, I'm gonna draw it down here. We have a T, we're saying this T has components along the crane and perpendicular to the crane. This angle, this side would be T sine phi. That's where that comes from. And so we need that angle in there. That angle, since this bottom one is 60 and that cable is horizontal, this is 90 degrees up in the top left corner, phi in this case is 30 degrees. And that's because the angles all have to add up to be 180 within a triangle. So that is the torque due to tension. I apologize, I put an L on the bottom of that. The torque due to the force of tension. So that will go in our equation down here. We need the torque due to gravity of the crane itself, the weight of the crane, and the torque due to the load. So the torque due to gravity R is that three meters. It's three meters from the pin up to that location where gravity is acting. The force is the mass of the crane times G. But again, we need the perpendicular component of the force. If we say RF sine phi, phi in this case, zoom in. maybe. There we go. The phi in that case is right here because R is along the crane, F is straight down. The angle between those two is phi in terms of our equation for RF sine phi. That angle in there is 60 degrees. Torque due to gravity R, the mass of the crane is 21, G 9.8, the angle is 60 degrees. And that comes because if I could zoom in, or if I were to zoom in again, here's the crane. In the picture, they show us this is 60 degrees. So the crane has to make an angle of 60 degrees with the vertical. And mg is vertical, and that's why we have the 60 degrees. Or we could also say the horizontal is 30, so that other one has to be 60. So that is the torque due to gravity, which we can calculate.
And that specifically the gravity of the weight of the crane itself, we need to find the torque due to the load. The torque due to the load, R is the entire length of the beam. Again, R, we start at the rotation axis and draw all the way up to where that force is applied. So that is the length of the beam itself. The force is the mg of the load. But again, we need that sine of phi, which is going to be 60 degrees again, because this gravity can be thought of as having components, one that's perpendicular to the crane and one that's parallel. When we say sine of this phi, we're getting this side this side that is perpendicular to the crane, which is also called the lever arm. So R, the mass of the load is 113 kilograms. She's 9.8. And so that's what we need to put in to finish up our equation. The torque due to the hanging load. So our only unknown here is tension, and that's the tension in that horizontal cable. Uh, let's go ahead and just solve for it. So I'm going to calculate everything on the right side. Sine of 60 plus. So I'm getting 2059, uh, that's rounded, but let's make sure, let's see, we have two significant figures. So I could either write 2100 newtons or 2.1 kilonewtons would work as well. Either way is fine. And uh, scientific notation too, 2.1 times 10 to 3 newtons would be fine. But we do have to consider uh, significant figures. We can't be accurate to those four digits. So hopefully you're seeing the approach. Free body diagram again. We have to be very careful to draw the forces exactly where they're acting to account for torque. If we wanted to finish out, just a side note again, and write out the net force equations, because we could be asked, for example, for the force that the pin is exerting. In the x direction, we drew an fx to the right. That's the force the pin is exerting in the horizontal direction. The only other force we have in the x direction is that tension in the horizontal cable. So, it turns out that the pin itself needs to apply a force that is equal to this tension that we have just found. In the y direction, so this is going back to that section two, just adding forces in x and y. In the y direction, I chose to draw the y component of the force at the pin upwards. I wasn't entirely sure, per se, but now if I think about it, it does need to be upwards. Because we have mg of the crane down, and we have mg of the load down. Those are the only forces in the y direction. So that y component on the pin has to counteract the force of gravity on the crane and the load. So we end up with the ability to, ability to solve for all of the unknown forces. In this particular problem, they only asked for tension, and we were able to get there by looking at torque alone.